All right, we'll get started, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is um, our Gorilla Tips and Tricks webinar. I do it once every year, usually once a year. And uh, it's a little different because <clears throat> it's not it's not an introduction to Gorilla scheduling uh, and budgeting. It's, although we will, you know, um, go over a few things that are fairly common. But for the most part, I'm just going to go over some uh, some things in Gorilla that people usually don't either know about, actually things that might not even be in the manual. We might not have videos on them. It's just sort of like a, um, I mean, I'm not saying we don't, but uh, these are some of the things that will help you um, use the software uh, and make it a little bit easier to, to get around and do certain little shortcuts and things like that that you might not know about, okay? So, um, as I go through the uh, the uh, the webinar, feel free to chat in a question if you have a question, um, and we'll have a Q and A at the end, also, of course. But uh, let's get started. And if, again, if you have any question about anything at all, you know that's fine. Um, go ahead and feel free to ask it. Okay. Okay. So I got I do have a PowerPoint that helps me uh, uh, keep on track. So I've got a few points, and we're going to go through that. So I'll be switching from the PowerPoint back and forth into Gorilla. So as I said, you should have a basic understanding of Gorilla scheduling and budgeting. I'm not going to go over how to import your screenplay and you know how to how to um, create a shoot day and how to move strips and things like that. So you should have a basic understanding. We have lots and lots of videos that uh, that go over these things. So. Um, Again, this is going to be a little, little more, you know, between intermediate and advanced, right? Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is a scene navigator, because people usually don't, don't um, play with this. But if you go into Gorilla, and uh, let's go into a, uh, a schedule. And on the right-hand side here, this is what we call our scene navigator. And of course, you probably know that you can click on it and go to a different scene. However, there are preferences that that you can select that sh that just show you or display certain information on these panels that you might not see. So, for example, down over here, uh, there's a little sort button, a little A to Z sort button. But if you hover over it, it says "See Navigator Preferences." So, if you click on that, you're going to see all these little preferences here. So let's say you want to see the shoot day, because it'd be nice to see the shoot day in that panel. So if you have done the shoot day, of course, if you've done your shoot days, if I click on it, boom, you could see the shoot day there. And another nice thing is you could see it's hyperlinked, so that if you want to go to that shoot day to enter some information about that shoot day or do a call sheet for that shoot day, you just have to click the link. So you could click that. Uh, there's show phase. Sometimes you have more than one phase. Uh, photography, principal photography, pickups, second unit, this kind of a thing. This will show the phase. Um, show shoot day and phase. So if you want to see both, you could do that. Show the location. That's actually quite handy because we can then very quickly see what the location is for that particular scene. Now, remember, the set is not the same as the location. The set is the world of the screenplay, which is imported from the screenplay. The location down over here, and we're going to go over a few more location tips, uh, is where you're actually going to physically shoot the scene. So it'd be kind of nice to see on the navigator where, if the, if the location is even entered. So you could see here what scene one, two, and three locations are entered. But in scene four, we don't have a location entered here, right? So you can click, you just click on scene four and go down over here to location, click on it and enter a location. So that's that's a nice little thing to do. Uh, another thing is episode number. Now this particular um, uh, schedule does not have episodes, but if you did want to uh, use the episodes, you can see the episode number. So, cause you can number a uh, number of scenes with an episode. So you could do that, right? So those are some really cool things that you can do uh, with the scene navigator, right? Nice little tip there. All right, let's go to the next one here. Uh, show hide screenplay display. Now, by default, when you go into Gorilla, this is usually the uh, screen that you're going to be looking at. You're going to see 
your elements up here scheduled and you'll see the other half of the of the uh, display with the actual screenplay that was imported from the final draft file, right? But if you don't want to see the final draft file for any reason, you know, I mean, you, to be honest with you, sometimes it um, loads a little bit faster if you don't, or if you're not really worried about that, you've already done your breakdown and you really don't want to see it. Of course, you could just click that and it'll give you more room here to show you um, the, uh, the schedule elements. Similarly, you could do the opposite. You can expand the screenplay display to see more of it. And you can actually click in the screenplay display and scroll down. I'm using my mouse wheel to go up and down. So these are certain preferences that you can use. And I'm going to go back to my normal um, uh, view to view the screenplay display on the screen. So that might help out a bit. Okay. Combine categories. This is actually a very good one. A lot of times when you import a screenplay from a, a screenplay program, you might have a one or two categories that might conflict. So for example, costumes and wardrobe is, is an example I have here. So for example, if I, you see here, I have a category called costumes. And if I click on it, you could see all the costumes that I have uh, entered for this particular category. But I also have one called wardrobe and you go down here and you see pink scarf and blue scarf is part of wardrobe. Now, to be honest with you, I mean, if you want to keep two, both categories, you certainly can, but it could be confusing. So we have an option in Gorilla that allows you to combine those two categories and not lose the elements attached to those categories. So let me show you how to do that. If you go into uh, elements, and then go into manage categories. I'm sorry, um, uh, up here, combine categories, right? Under the elements pull down menu, combine categories. So let's say we want to combine cost, uh, costumes and wardrobe into one. So what's the primary? I'm going to select costumes as the primary because we have more elements, as you, you, you remember seeing in costumes. And then let's say I want to, I want to um, combine it with wardrobe, which is what I'm going to do, right? If I clicked OK now, what it would do is it will grab all the elements from wardrobe, and I think there were two of them, there were two scarves, and put them in costumes and delete the costume category. So I can go ahead and do that. The categories have combined. And now if I go back here to costumes, you're going to see those all the scarves are together in the costumes category. Now, the wardrobe category was deleted. OK, so just bear in mind, that will happen if you combine categories, all right? Let's go to the next one here. Um, hide categories. Oh, okay. So this one, uh, this one uh, you can't really see, but if you click on the three dots down here and say create modify categories, if I were to turn these on, these are untitled, right? And then close this up, uh, you could see these categories here. So similarly, if I want to go in and hide certain categories, so let's say you don't want to see that, you're not deleting it by doing this. You're just hiding it, right? So example um, is, let's say, livestock. We This particular uh, schedule might not need livestock. It might not need animal handler. So I can click that, which doesn't delete it. It just hides it, right? So if I close this up now, you can see I've got a little more room here, a little more easier to manage and animal handler is no longer there. It's not deleted, it's just hidden from view. Okay, that's a cool little uh, thing there to do. Category abbreviation, similarly, uh, each category does have an abbreviation to it, and you can modify the abbreviation. So if I put back animal handler, it's AH, livestock is LV, and you'll see on certain reports, you can see the abbreviation in uh, if you want. So that's something you could do. You could also see the count here. So for example, costumes, CS, 12 costumes in the total schedule, right? We've got 10 cast members. So it's kind of cool if you want to very quickly see how many props I have for this particular schedule, you can go in here and see I've got 19 props scheduled for this particular schedule, right? Okay, let's go on to the next one here. 
um, height elements similar to height categories. Now, this is something we did add. I don't remember what version we added it in, but it's very possible that that now this happens to be a short schedule, but a lot of times you can have really hundreds and hundreds of elements, especially in props and such, and, and you know, costumes too. And once you've scheduled that elements, you might not ever need it again. In other words, you might not not you might you might not really need to see it in the list. So what you can do is if I go to elements, there is an option to hide an element. So for example, let's see if I can go into uh, props. I'm going to filter props, right? And I really, you know, this one right here, ornate giraffe made entirely out of paper matches. It's really needed only, and I know this because, you know, I'm, I'm doing the schedule. This particular element is really only needed for one scene. We already, we already scheduled it, right? So if I wanted to, I can click on hide. Now, again, doesn't delete it, but hides it. So it's no longer going to be seen in the list when you click on props. And let's say vacuum cleaner with long film, flimsy hose, this kind of a thing also, we can do that. And you can see that it grays it out. Oops, sorry. Go back there. It grays it out and it puts a little uh, icon there that looks like an eye with a cross in it, right? So if I close this and then go into uh, props, you're going to see that those two, new, those two props, the vacuum and the giraffe, that ornate giraffe made out of matches, is no longer in the list. And again, just a nice little handy thing that you can do to sort of tidy up the, your workspace so you don't have to be cluttered with all the things there, right? Uh, filter elements, I actually showed this by, by, by um, mistake. Well, not by mistake, but you go into elements. This is really cool. So if you want to oh, I keep on, I'm not used to this keyboard. Sorry about that. Let me go back into elements here. There we go. So if I were to uh, go up here to filter, Let's say I want to see all my makeup. Oh, I don't have any makeup. Well, that's good. Let's go filter. Let's say set dressing. This will show you all the set dressing. So you can filter your elements in the list very quickly if you wanted to look and see what it is that you have. You can also click on the element button here to sort by alphabetically. So very quickly, I can see all the set dressing sorted by, by alphabetically, what it is that I um want to look for or id now this is empty but if i go to cast members cast members will usually have ids so if i click on id and i could say cast members first i could sort by id okay so that is a little helpful feature here find elements and then delete or or modify so this is a lot of people don't know about this but you can do find elements so for example let me do show all elements here again so if I want to show everything, this is showing me all my elements by hitting the uh, Apple F or it's under here under find, right? Under find, you come up with a, a find screen and there's a lot of criteria here that you can enter. So for example, if I wanted to just see, for example, all my costumes, I can do that. But of course, that's the same as the filter, right? And I click on perform find, but you look at, we, we have a different view here of the list. We have a little bit more information. We've got the rate here. We've got the description. And we can literally click on an element to go to it. So now we go to the detail of the scarf, which is kind of cool. But another thing you can use, uh, there's look at all these things you can do. So if I wanted to find all elements that have a rate of over $100 a day, okay, I could do that. You know, um, if I wanted to find all elements um, that have the word pink in them, and click on perform find. It happens to be, I have two, go figure. Pink scarf and pinkish gas billows out, right? One is a special effect and one is a costume, okay? If I wanted to uh, find uh, anything with a, a particular, um, if the element is scheduled, you could do that also, right? Um, another thing you could do is once you do the find, so for example, let's go back to pink, right? And do a perform fine. I could do another request, by the way, too. That's kind of cool. So anything pink and also anything uh, with, I know that I have, uh, I'm, just, I'm cheating because I'm looking on the left here, anything with the word plunger, okay? And I do perform find, it's going to find anything pink 
and and anything uh, with with uh, 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 the word plunger in it. And then once you have the list. You can literally, now this is another cool feature. Notice there's, it says delete found elements. So I can literally delete them all, just those three by clicking delete found elements. Okay. So that's, that's a feature most people don't know about. Uh, I got a question here. Uh, how would you do, uh, oh, over a certain dollars. Okay. So you, you just use the, um, the greater than symbol, right? So uh, for example, um, if I were, let me just check to see see vehicles info. Uh, let's say the daily rate here is 1000 for the Mercedes, right? And if I go to find, and I think I put data rate, you put greater than, you know, 500 or 400 or whatever, and then it would find it. So greater than would be, uh, you know, greater than or less than, right? Just the greater, it's a simple algebraic math, right? So that's how you would do that. Okay, yes, of course. All right, let's go on to the next one now. Uh, re removes, oh, this is something we actually added in version eight. Um, you would think remove scheduled elements. So what this allows you to do, okay, put it this way. Uh, if I'm, let's go to a scene that uh, has a whole bunch. Okay, so, all right, scene 12, for example. So I've got five uh, scheduled elements here. Let's say for whatever reason, I want to reset the scene and start scheduling it again. By def no, before version eight, I think it was version eight, I would have to go here and say delete and then delete. And you can see what a pain in the ass that is. If I have 30 or 40 elements here and I did delete, 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 it could be a real pain in the butt. But now we have remove scheduled elements from breakdown sheet and it removes all of them in one shot. And so what this allows you to do is, okay, let me reset and let me go back and now you know, re redo my schedule for this particular scene. Now it doesn't delete the elements, it just removes them from the sheet. So whatever I had there, there was some set dressing, and I think it was a cast member, Amanda, this kind of thing. She's still there. So if I go back and put Amanda in here, I could do that. I'm re re recreating the scene per se, right? So that's a new feature that we added. Uh, just uh, again, just, uh, simple, but my God, if you had 60 or 70 elements and you had to delete, 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 that could really be a pain in the ass. So that was something we added, okay? Uh, search web for element image. Okay, this is kind of cool. So you probably know that, again, we're going to go back into elements. You can uh, put an, Im a, an element image, right? To a particular uh, element. So for example, the Mercedes is a good example. Grab this, uh, this image. So let's say I want to go to, let's see here. Let me show uh, props and let's see, large glass jar. Okay, it's a good example. So let's see, now we go to info here. Now I can grab an image and put it in here, but this is a cool feature here that what we can do is search the internet for um, a large glass jar. So if I click this button, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go out to the internet right now on Google search and search large glass jar. And you could see there's, you know, this is just Google, right? So if I like this one, I can right click it. I could copy the image. I can close my browser here and then I could do paste. That's really simple, right? So if I wanted to be able to br bring in a, a, a picture or an image of a certain element, like a vacuum cleaner, I think I had, or a cupcake or whatever there, rolling pin, plunger, you can literally just go, to, you, you go to the element first, right? So I think I have cupcakes. What else do I not have? Um, olive, okay. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to put your olive, but who knows, you know, my goodness. This is just, this happens to be just uh, props, right? But this would maybe costumes, right? Maybe just we do costumes. Um, uh, white sandals. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I haven't done this one yet. Let's just give it a shot. Again, it searches on the name. Right. So if I click white sandals and again, it's just a Google search. Right. All right. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Right. Uh, I could copy that or maybe this one or whatever. I don't know. But you copy it. Right. Click it. Copy it and, and pop it in there. OK, so that's kind of cool. All right. Let's go to the next one. 
uh, export data. This is a very generalized one, but in Gorilla, you can uh, export just about anything that you import for the most part. So I'll show you, for example, elements, since we're on elements. And it's usually done under the file pull-down menu, right? So if you go to file, um, you could see that you could export elements. If I was in crew or in actors or in breakdown sheets, I would go to file and it would say export breakdown sheets, right? So if I click on export elements, I can then say, well, what category do you want to export? Let's say I want to export all my props, right? I click that. I click, I enter the name props. Let's say I want it to be Excel. I want to automatically open the file and click save. And what that's, of course, you have to have Excel. Uh, Excel oh, it looks like I'm my Excel subscription. <laughs> Why isn't it not there? There it goes. Okay, perfect. Yay. <laughs> I pay my I pay my monthly subscription. Okay, so you can see that very quickly, my props are in an Excel spreadsheet, and then I can do whatever I want with them, right? Okay, and you could do that. Now, that just happens to be with elements. If I go into uh, breakdown sheets, which is right here, file, export breakdown sheets to Excel, same thing, right? If I click that, this is actually gives you a little preview of what it's going to look like, and I click on this little export button, it will export this entire, all the data here to an Excel file and just open it up immediately. Uh, can you do multiple categories? Uh, for elements, let's see. If you go to elements, um, export elements, you probably have to do them one at a time. Uh, I mean, you could do, you know, uh, props. You could do, you just have to do different files then combine them in Excel. It doesn't look like we have a, a select all in this particular section. But um, again, if I want to do makeup now and livestock, whatever, I would just have to... Uh, to open, you know, create the Excel file, and copy paste. So, so a little bit of work there if you need to do that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see what's the next one. Uh, import crew. This is actually very good too because a lot of times when you are creating a schedule, and especially a schedule, you use the. Sometimes people use the same crew in different projects. So. I happen to have two projects here and these this crew members are already entered, but let's say I wanted to import crew from an Excel file. I can click on uh, from an Excel file or from another schedule. So if I wanted to click on from a text Excel file, if I set up my Excel file uh, to look something like this, now you don't, it looks kind of scary, but all you really need is the first name and the last name. You don't have to do everything else. This is showing you just in case you want to do city state, email, phone, uh, uh, title and department, you can. But of course, you can do all that in Gorilla too, once you get that data in there. So you can actually create an Excel spreadsheet or get have someone send you an Excel spreadsheet of all the crew, because a lot of times people will have an Excel spreadsheet of all their crew and then import all that data into Gorilla. So you don't have to type it in manually. Now, once you get it into Gorilla, if you want to import it into from another schedule, you can do that. Now, I happen to have just two schedules loaded, but this schedule here has five crew members attached to it. So if I click this, it would bring in those five crew members from this particular schedule and now bring them into this schedule. Okay, so that's pretty cool that you could do import crew. Combine crew titles, similar to the combining of the categories, you could combine crew titles. Now, this is useful because a lot of times you might have some titles that are very similar uh, and you might want to combine them. Uh, so gaffer and lighting technician is an, an example that I have. So if you see here, I've got Danny Zuko as a lighting technician, but I also have a gaffer named David Allman. And let's say we were going to have both, for example, but now we're not or what have you. But so what you can do is you can combine the category, uh, combine the uh, crew titles. So what you want to do here is click manage crew titles. And there's a button here called combine. This is brand new. So in version eight, so we click on combine. It's going to say select the first title that you want to combine. Let's select gaffer. And right there. And now which, what do you want to combine it with? So I'm going to say lighting technician. So it's just going to say, okay, hold on, because this, this is what you want to do. Do you want to combine gaffer and lighting technician? 
and the second crew title will be, will be deleted. So lighting technician is going to be deleted, but gaffer is going to be there. So whoever was in lighting technician is now going to become a gaffer. Okay. I mean, it's helpful if you have a lot of PAs or if you have a lot of people in, in uh, two, two different categories. I'm not going to do that, though. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Primary crew. This is something we also added in version eight. The ability, we'll go back into crew, to select a certain crew member to be a primary crew member. And you can see that by a star next to their name. So if I wanted to, let's say, uh, first camera assistant, let's say I wanted them to be a primary, you would just go into their detail and click that primary crew. And the little star will appear next to underneath their name here. And you'll see the little star in the list. So I've got five primary crew members. Now, why is that important? Because certain reports, you could show the primary crew members, uh, you know, ahead of the other crew members, okay, in the list. And also in, in call times, so if I go to shoot days and go into a call, let's go into, uh, let's see, let's go into that day in particular. I don't think I have anything on that day. So in this particular day, if I wanted to add call times, a call call to call crew, crew call, sorry, to this particular day, I can then, instead of saying add all crew to this day, which I can certainly do, right? I can say add primary crew. And what this allows you to do is it just brings in those primary crew members that we need pretty much for every day. And then you can go ahead and say, you know, this guy needs to be there at eight, this guy needs to be there at 830 or what have you. So primary crew is just a designation that you can add to a crew member so that they um, are in a different class. Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. That's primary crew. Um, add crew to shoot day. Import. Oh, this, I think, I, well, I did that already. Um, right. I did that already. Add crew to shoot day. So it looks like I kind of combined those, right? Right. Do locations. Okay. So this is not so much a, um, uh, well, it is a tip. That's for sure. But um, incredibly important to do locations before you do your strip board. Okay. And we talked a little bit about locations earlier. So let's let me show you why why this is so important to do this. When you import your screenplay from Final Draft or whatever screenplay uh, program you're using, the, the 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 location of course does not come in. The set comes in, right? This is part of the screenplay. Interior set uh, day night. This is empty. Um, it is of course you need to break down your script. You need to go by scene by scene and add your cast members and props and set dressing and what have you to all of your scenes. Um, however, it is incredibly important to do your locations before you do your shoot days and your strip board, okay? And even if you don't have your location set uh, to put placeholders for your locations. So what do I mean by that? So let's do this. Let's click on the locations button. And I happen to have, um, there's a video here, right? I happen to have four or five or six locations here that I've already created. And you know you can uh, put a uh, import an image for that location if you want. So let's say Sam's Diner on Main Street is is an example. I click on info, and I've created a location. I literally created a physical location that we're going to shoot. Here's the address. Uh, here's the budget. Uh, here's the contact. Here's some photos. Right. So once I've created, and let's say I don't even know necessarily if, I, but I need a diner, and I don't necessarily have the location. Right. What you can do is literally just say diner TBD, right? You could certainly do that, TBD. Uh, and same thing with another location, you know, um, you know, restaurant TBD. But you don't know exa exactly where it's going to be or, 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 or what have you. But if you create the placeholder for the location, what you can then do is you can have a list of locations here knowing, okay, I know I need to see, shoot this scene at a particular location. And then you go through each scene and attach that location to the scene, okay? So for example, kitchenette, we're, we're, this is an actual physical apartment, right? So I click here, Amanda's apartment. We are shooting the kitchenette scene, which is scene 13, uh, 12, sorry, at the physical location, Amanda's apartment. Uh, we are shooting, I'm going to go to scene two, this Hollywood set, wherever this, you know, set, 
on uh, at Sam's Diner on Main Street, or if it's TBD, it might say TBD. Okay, why that? Why do that? Because when you go to the strip board, you will be able to see the location on the scenes. Okay, so if I go here to the board and notice here on the right. Now here's the set. Notice the difference, and this is important to notice the difference between a set and a location. This is the set. This is the set. All here you can see it's all in the same column is the set, but over here is the location. And it's very possible that the location is completely different than where the set is, right? So here I have Sam's Diner here, uh, scene two and scene three, but why are we shooting them in two different two different days, right? Now that I know that these two are the same location, let's move the, move it so that we can we can shoot at the same day, okay? So that's why doing the location uh, for each breakdown sheet is incredibly important, right? Okay, hope that makes sense. Do your locations before you do your strip board, all right? Okay, let's go to create your board, sorting options in multiple boards. Now, uh, when since we're on the board, let's go ahead and play with that a bit, right? So what you can do is you can do multiple boards. You don't have to do just one board. So let me go ahead and save this board. And oh, we do have, I have, I think there's one I have here, a little uh, tip that backs up the board. So I'll do that. I'll show you that when we get to the tip. But so let's go ahead and create a brand new board, right? I don't want to delete this board. I want to keep it. I still want to play with it, but I want to create a new board, a new scenario, right? So what I can do is I can click on this button here. Um, it asks you to name the board. So let's call it board number two. Um, you, can, you can select a phase for the board. Now I'm going to select principal photography because that's the scenes that we're going to be playing with and select create board. Now, when you create a brand new board for the very first time, it pops in all your scenes on the board with all your shoot dates at the bottom, right? Now, we can go ahead and start dragging and dropping the board, uh, the scene, the, the strips to where you wanted to do that, to where you want to move them. But at the very at the very uh, beginning of creating the board, you can use the stored strips option. This is really the only place you can use it is right when you create your board, right? You don't do it after you've done all your strips because they're already sorted. But if I click this, I can then say sort by set or sort by, oh, here's location, right? There's location. That's, remember again, how that location keeps on bringing up. Let's do that. Let's sort by location and then by day, night, and then by scene number. Sounds good. And it's giving you a warning that this is gonna overwrite the existing sort, and it gives you a warning again, right? So let's say click on sort. So what this is going to do, now these scenes up here at the top did not have a location entered, that's they're blank. So that's why they're going to be sorted at the top. But notice that Amanda's apartment, and these are the location, is all clumped together. And I can then say, okay, so let's do this. And let's do this. And there you go. Amanda's apartment, all Amanda's apartment locations, location scenes are going to be shot on day two. Okay. And then you can go ahead and, and, and do the same thing with, with Sam's diner. So let's say we want this up here. We want this uh, right uh, there. And then Sam's, uh, well, uh, yeah, let's say we want these. We don't know what to do with those, right? Sam's diner is going to be over there. And then let's go ahead and save the board. And what this is going to do is give you another scenario for the board, okay? Remember, this is called board two, if you could see up here in the top left, right? If I click on that, you're going to see there's board two, but there's my default board. So if I want to go back, this is the board we had prior to creating the board. Um, oh, awesome. Excellent. I don't know which tip. I just saw the best tip so far. Um, maybe the, hopefully this one. In. Yeah. The sorting or whatever, the new board. Um, you now have multiple boards that you can play the sorting. Yeah. Most people don't do this. Most people go into the board and start dragging and dropping. The problem is, see, now if I go back to this uh, sort board number two now, you really cannot sort again. Why? Because if I do whatever, if I do, oh, let me do it by set. Well, it's going to completely resort the board and lose the prior sort, right? So what you'd want to do, I'm going to close that up. You want to, if you want to do that, you want to create a new board first, you know, unless you really don't care about the board that you're, that you have. 
right? So you could do as many boards as you want, doesn't matter, but you could only have one default board at a time. So it happens to be, even though I created board number two, that my default board is still this one up here, which is the one uh, by looking at it, let me go to it. There we go, is this one. So that means the default board is all the, is the board that you're going to be using for all your, your reports. So if I do a strip board report, or if I do a shooting schedule report, or breakdown summary report, or one line, or even the call sheet. If I do a call sheet right now for day one, these are the scenes that are going to be shown on the call sheet. Even though I've got, you know, four different boards, this is default. It's going to go to this. So it's important to know what your default board is. Okay. All right. I'm glad that was a good one. Uh, scheduling preferences. Got it. Okay. So again, a lot of people really don't go up to the pull down menus anymore used to be that this is how software programs were created. They were all about the pull-down menus because you have all these options up here. People forget, oh, wow, I can go up to the top and do things, right? You don't have to just click buttons. So let me close this board uh, right here. So under the extras, there's something called scheduling preferences. We also have this for budgeting, for budgeting preferences. If I select that, you're going to see all these different preferences that you can select for uh, a certain function, okay? This happens to be for tagging. This happens to be for shooting. There's a lot of them here. So I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm just gonna point, I'm just pointing them out to you, right? You can go ahead and play with them all and, and kind of look at it. Strip board functions, like double clicking a strip on the strip board closes a strip board window. To be honest with you, you'd be like, well, what do I care? Well, it is important because you can't, once you have, well, if you have a strip board window open and the breakdown window open, when you make changes on the breakdown, it does not affect the strip board until you close the window and reopen the window. Same vice versa, okay? So um, important to understand that, right? Okay, uh, auto backup strip board to an Excel file. Remember when I did the saving, it did an auto backup. You can turn that because it does it every single time. You can turn it off and this is where you would turn it off, okay? But I'm gonna, it's a, it's a cool tip and I'm gonna show you uh, uh, how to access that later. Okay. Anyway, uh, strip board window, where you want the position to be and, um, calculating days for location. Okay. So those you could play with, I'm not going to go over them, but I just want to, I just want to point them out to you again. This is not a how to use gorilla. It's just tips and tricks to show you certain things. Okay. Scheduling preferences, customizing the board. Um, let me go back. Let's go back to the board. And when you are, not only can you do uh, different different scenarios, right, for the board, but you can actually change the look and look of the board, right? So right now, you can see that I've got the scenes here and the set here and the location there. And the second line, I've got the page count and the synopsis. But if I wanted to move that around a little bit, this button right here, the strip board print design window, allows you to go in. And again, we have a video on that, as you can see. But what this allows you to do, and it's a little little um, scary to look at, but to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. Uh, this just turns on and off certain fields. So if you do not want the IE field, or the interior exterior field, for some reason to show, you could turn that off. If you don't want the synopsis to show, for some reason, you could turn that off. Or you can tell it where to place place it, either either row A or row B. And you can also have the option to do labels. So if I look at, for example, right here, scenes, scenes, that's a label, right? Uh, do I have any more? Oh, yeah, I have, uh, oh, sheet is turned off. You see that? If I were to turn that on, notice sheet number pops in. That actually should be turned on because it's an active, an active um, field, right? And then script page and unit, um, for, uh, let's see, for scene, uh, for A11. Let's turn that, close, close that up. Let's say, okay, right? And what this is going to do is it's gonna print the labels and show you, you could, you could literally tell, so here's script page over there, is right over there on the right, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can um, design the board and, and it will print in the way that you design it. Okay, so right now, if I were to click the print button over here, and then the uh, the print uh, uh, board, notice that it will mimic the printing 
will mimic what you have seen, what you're looking at on the board. Okay. All right. Let's see. Deleting multiple strips and banners. Okay. Um, also new, I think, I don't think, I think we added this in version 8.2. I get a little confused sometimes where, when we added a new feature. But if you wanted to, uh, to delete multiple strips and, multi or, and or multiple banners, there's an option here to do delete multiple and or delete uh, banners. So if I were to click delete multiple strips, it just brings you another window here. And there's a little X button, <clears throat> excuse me, next to the strip. So if I were to click delete, 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 I could do this very, very quickly and delete, as you can see, a whole bunch of stuff. Now, again, it doesn't remove the scene, it doesn't delete the scene. It just deletes the, uh, removes it from the strip board, right? So you can see those, street, those scenes are now gone. You can add them in again by clicking the add button up here. And then you could go ahead and add those scenes again to the board if you wanted to. The same with banners. <clears throat> if I go to delete multiple banners. I only have two here. There's a company move one right there and night shoot. Where's that? Right there, night shoot, 8 p.m. So before, if you wanted to delete a banner, you have to do it one at a time. Now you can go ahead and delete multiple banners. Okay. Okay. Let's close that. Let's go next to the next one. Add, I actually showed you that. Add scene to the board. That was brand new. Auto save stripboard to Excel. So when every time you do save, it does pop up a little message there. And let me show you what that does. That will, um, let me see where that is here. Um, auto save board. It's in here somewhere. Backup stripboards. There we go. Every time you do the save of the board, you will see an Excel file that's created. It just takes a couple seconds that backs it, uh, that that gives you an Excel backup of the board, right? So um, <clears throat> I'm not sure which is the latest one here today, 231. Okay, that was 231. So this is, uh, if I just click on the space bar to show it to you, it's just an Excel, but you've got a backup of your board here in case you you make a mistake or you mess up and you can recreate your board based on the backup if needed, right? And all these, I mean, yeah, there we go. That's a different one, right? That's a different one. And then board number two, that was the different board that I created, right? The second board, right? So you could see that. So that's kind of cool. And again, that you could turn that off in preferences. So if you don't want to see that error over and over and over, not error, I'm sorry, that message over and over again, you could turn it off. Main location. So again, we're going back to location. This is a cool feature we added in version eight, which allows you to set um, a main location for a shoot day. What does that mean? So when you do a call sheet, you usually have more than one scene being shot for the day, right? Usually, not all, it's all the time. But if you do, uh, sometimes a scene can have a different location. So you might have two scenes or three scenes or four scenes, and you might literally have three or four different locations. I mean, that's a lot to move to move around in a day. But let's say, for example, if I go to scene one, this is location Beverly Hills set. And you could see that, um, uh, yeah, Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills set. And notice this button here. This is brand new in version eight. It says main location, okay? If I go to scene two, it just happens to be, I know that scene one and scene two are being shot on the same day. I've got a different location and it doesn't say main location, right? So let me show you what that means. If I go to the call sheet and we go into shoot days and go to the first day, because I know the first day is going to be, we're going to shoot scene one and scene two, right? So <clears throat> let's go into scene one, uh, I'm sorry, day one. And we're going to go into uh, this tab here, which is weather hospital parking, which shows you the location. So notice here for scene one, I'm sorry, day one, right? Beverly Hills set, and here's the location uh, address is entered because it says main location for the day, right? Okay, why is that important? Because if I print a call sheet right now 
and I'm going to just print one real quick just to uh, show you what shows up on the call sheet. Okay. We're going to see right here, location, that's the Beverly Hills location, right? Even though if I scroll down a bit, location and address info, notice that two locations are entered. Will the Beverly Hills set location and Sam's Diner. Why? Because we're shooting scenes one and two, and I guess now three, on day one. Scene one is the Beverly Hills location, and scene two is the, I'll answer that call, I'll call sheet's uh, question in a minute, and scene two is the um, uh, Sam's Diner, right? But to be honest with you, scene two is where we're going to be spending most of our day because that's the physical location, right? So I want to change it to be uh, to the, the main location to be Sam's Diner. So if I'm going to go back here to scene two and say, I want that to be the main location right there. So if I go to scene one, notice that's no longer main location. So now if I go to shoot days and go to scene uh, day one and print the call sheet, well, first of all, you can see right here. There it is right there. Now it changed. It used to be the other one. And if I do the call sheet and print that out again, then you're going to see the main location to be the Sam's Diner location. So the question is, is Koala now built into the bundle for making call sheets? Uh, Koala is now... Um, an add-on to Gorilla 8. We no longer have, as of Gorilla 8, we no longer have an, an independent program, Koala Call Sheets. It used to be a separate program. It used to be that you would have to export your data from Gorilla uh, into Koala Call Sheets and create the call sheet. It is now an add-on to Gorilla, and we added a lot more. So it's not just an add-on. We literally um, added uh, more templates. We added more options. We added more features. We added more um, we have a whole, um, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, catering. We have a whole catering module now that's part of Koala. Um, and a few other things that are now part of Koala call sheets, but it is an add-on to Gorilla 8. So yes, it is, it is built into the, it is built into Gorilla, but it is an add-on. And what I mean by that is, uh, if you want, if you want to purchase it, it is an at one time fee only. Is no subscription. Once you buy it, um, you get it for um, you. You you have koala for gorilla. Okay, so um, yeah, it's really really cool and so much easier to use. It, it, would come, it was always a little cumbersome to export your data into koala and then do the call sheet. And then if you make a change in koala, it doesn't make a change in gorilla and vice versa. So this is much much easier, much easier. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, main location, saving schedules. Okay, <clears throat> this is just a general say about saving, okay? So I'm going to explain just very quickly on how Gorilla works when it comes to saving. So when, if I were to quit Gorilla right now, literally quit Gorilla with all the changes that I made, everything is saved. If I literally shut down Gorilla now, aside from saving the board when I click on the board, because saving the board is a separate thing. But if I were to, you know, add, you know, uh, let's see, no, no, let's get something a little better, special effects here, uh, pinkish gas, right? Right here, excuse me, to the scene, pardon me. Right now, if I were to quit, Gorilla saves all your work, okay? Under, just understand that, however, it does, Gorilla does, and I'm going to go down here to the little preferences, back up, um, can give you reminders every, and you could set the, set it up to be one hour or two hours or three hours or whatever. Every, by default, it's one hour. Pop-up reminders, good time to save Gorilla, good time to save Gorilla. It's, um, again, Gorilla already saves your work as you go. It's a backup. So when you create backups, it's literally that. Okay, so it does not, um, so if I were to just go into, let me hide Gorilla here. I don't know if I have any here, to be honest with you. When it saves them in right here, right here, I don't have any. Okay, let me do it. Let me do it real quick. So let's say, go here, documents, and save. 
Okay, so now what I'm doing now is I'm saving my schedule to my documents folder. So it, what it's really doing, it's creating a backup, okay? And what I mean by that is if I hide Gorilla, there we go. Notice it wasn't there before. There it is, and that's a backup of your schedule. When I launch Gorilla, you never launch the schedule to launch it. You go into Gorilla, into the project manager. So if I wanted to load that schedule, first of all, I don't have to, it's already loaded because I literally just saved it, right? But if I were to make any changes now, so let's say I go in here and let me go to scene three. What was the scene I had? Mm, right here, pinkish gas. Okay. And let me add makeup and let's say clown makeup. Right? Now, if I... Now I've already made a difference in this schedule. So this schedule that I have loaded in Gorilla, the only difference right now is clown makeup is created as an element and clown makeup is added as an, a scheduled element for scene two. That is not saved in this file, okay? If I wanted to save it, save it again, let me do that. And let me go back to manager and over here. And uh, actually, you know, you can... It's, I mean, if I wanted to, I could change, change the name, right? You know, A, okay, if I want to do that, you know, just to keep it so that we know what we're doing. And then save, so it won't tell you overwrite, right? Otherwise, it would tell, it would tell me to overwrite the schedule, okay? So now I've created, here we go, two schedules, okay? The only difference between A and not A is in A, I've got that cl clown makeup. That's really the only difference. Okay, so that's basically saving. Uh, you could do the same with budgets, the same exact thing. I know I haven't even gone to the budget module. I have a few tips and tricks for budgeting. Hopefully I can get to them. I'm, I'm running a little late. But anyway, that's saving. And if you want to set up a Dropbox folder, you can do that or an iCloud folder if you have iCloud, which I do, and save to iCloud. Okay, you could do that too. All right. Oh, here we go. So we're probably going to budget now. Link a budget to a schedule. So um, as you probably know, you can link a, a budget to a schedule. So right now, this is linked to Hotel Cucaracha. You just click on the three dots. Uh, let me unlink it and then link it again. There we go. So now it's linked. And what that means is that if I go into the budget and go into a particular detail line item, it's gotta be in the detail and go ahead down here to import cast or import crew. What we're looking at now is uh, a crew or cast. Uh, we happen to be in crew. That's from the schedule. This is not in the budget. What I'm looking at right now, all of this information here, including the shoot days, including the rates, you might think it's part of the budget. It's not, right? It's part of the schedule. And if I wanted to import Dina, I can do that. And now Dina is is imported into the uh, into the budget, and there she's hyperlinked. That's brand new to in version eight. So if I click on Dina, I can then get a uh, contact record, and this contact record again is in the schedule. It's not in the budget. All this we I never entered the phone number in the budget, and you don't do that, right? Or the shoot dates in the budget. That's not in the schedule. But we're just getting a window of seeing what is in the schedule based on the link. Okay, uh, the rate book is something that uh, I always love showing because it's so fun to do. But let's say Dina, she was a makeup artist, right? So let's go into, uh, let's see if I can find makeup. All right, um, 700, I think, if I can remember, basic agreement, 706. Okay, so here we go. Here's the 706 make uh, makeup agreement. And if I wanted to bring in an hourly rate or a daily rate, I can do that. And notice that it pops in, right? And click on the little rate book button. It's telling me it's an IATSE rate, um, the effective dates of the rates, and the uh, the union and all that kind of information. So that was that's really cool because you can literally pop in a rate from the rate book. You could do it from SAG, from make uh, uh, local six hundred, uh, independent. Uh, um, I'm sorry, low budget of rates also, right? You could do that. Okay, 26. I don't know how long I have. Oh, gosh. Okay. I wanted to try to finish at three so we could do Q&A. Budget globals. Um, okay, let me see if I can 
combine two of them, prep, shoot, wrap. Okay, so you probably know what a global is. I certainly hope so. That's not a tip and trick. It's just an explanation. But what a prep, shoot, wrap allows you to do, and let me, this already has one. So let me go to another one. Let me go into here. Ah, that one has one too. Camera department, how about this one? There we go. Okay, so a lot of times in budgets, you want to create what's called prep, shoot, wrap, three lines. Um, and, and you could have, usually it's week. So like, let's say one week for prep and six weeks for shoot or whatever the, the thing is. What we added in Gorilla 8 is the ability to create prep, shoot, wrap as a global. Okay, so let's say go in here to the globals and um, I'm going to click prep, create prep. But before I do that, hold on. Let me show you this. You go to budget preferences. Remember, just like scheduling had preferences, budget has preferences. So if I go in here to the prep shoot wrap tab, I've set up, this is what I've set up, two weeks for prep, six weeks for shoot, and one for wrap. Now I could change that to whatever I want, right? But that's my default, let's say. So now if I go into globals and I say, let's create a prep shoot wrap, notice that it created two, six, and one. So what I can do now is let's do, there we go. And now what I've created really quickly is three lines with two, six, and one. Fourth level budget. So this is actually a, a, something that most people don't use, but it's very, very, very cool. And what this allows you to do is let's go into, um, let's see, costumes, do I have costumes? Wardrobe, okay, wardrobe. Again, see how it's uh, costumes and wardrobe are interchangeable sometimes. So if we go to the costumes, a lot of times in the budget, you will have a, a certain key, a department head, do the budget for that, for their department. So camera will do their own budget. Makeup will do their own budget. Costumes will do their own budget. Gaffers will do their own budget, et cetera. So what you can do is you can tell these keys to do their own budget in Excel. And then they can then send you the budget and you could import that into Gorilla, not having to retype all that information. Okay, so let me show you how that's done. So I'm gonna go into um, right here in budget additions, there is fourth level import, import sample. So there are two sample files here. One is makeup, makeup, not costumes. Why did I go to, I'll, I'll, I'll do makeup and one camera. So. In here, this is just a very simple Excel file that has the name, the quantity, uh, the uh, multiplier, and the rate. So for example, this you could see is makeup, that the makeup person created an Excel file. So let's import that. So what we're gonna do, we'll go to makeup, not costumes. And I thought it was uh, costumes. Okay, uh, let's go into box rental and let's go into here into fourth level. So normally you can just type in, uh, or, uh, you know, let's say if she says, uh, the makeup person says, it's going to be $2,500 or whatever, you can just type in the rate and it'll be done. But if you wanted to see the detail of all that makeup, of all the line items, you can click on fourth level, click on import, and then <clears throat> let's go here to, let's see if I can find it, documents, uh, budget editions, fourth level makeup. There we go. And this is going to show you right now, you can see, you could actually scroll through it. There it is. And click import. And all those items that we just saw in the Excel file come in to Gorilla as a fourth level item. I can then close that up and notice that the subtotal, subtotals, what, are, what those light items are, right? If I wanted to look at it again, I could click on the little paper clip and I can literally go through. And this, this is a brand new feature too. Let's say, for example, we don't need a Dracula cape, I can block it, right? And now that will not be summed up in the um, in the uh, total, right? Okay, very cool. That's the fourth level. Uh, printing and exporting. Okay, for, for, for the budget, right? For the budget. So um, when it comes to, to printing and exporting the budget, there are two ways to do it. A lot of people, uh, you can either, let me go back to the top sheet. Okay, down here, the little print button here allows you the opportunity 
to export the top, I'm sorry, to print the top sheet, account detail, or fourth level report into a, uh, a really nice looking format, right? So if I were to click on detail and classic and summary fringes, it's compiling a detailed report for me with the top sheet, okay? So I can scroll through this and you can see there's my top sheet, there's my detailed report, and it's pretty detailed as you can see. Uh, the prep shoot wrap down there is there and all the color coding is there and looks pretty nice, right? You could do that for uh, the top sheet account or detail levels of the budget. You can also, if you want to, and let me go to, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Go back here to file and do export top sheet accounts in detail. What this allows you to do is this allows you to export, now understand the difference between, between print and export, all the data from your top sheet or your budget to Excel. And then you can modify it how you want or send it to someone who wants to manipulate it, who doesn't have a gorilla, right? Um, you could also, and I'm going to go a little further here, go back to manager. Um, let's see here. Um, import. I'm going to show you this. Let's see. There we go. Um, if you go here, you can import a movie magic budget right down here. It's a little, little difficult to find, but you can import a, a, a budget created in movie magic version seven or version 10, which is the XML file. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And you can also in the schedule, a new feature in Gorilla 8 is right here, export to final draft or movie magic scheduling. So you could export your, your screenplay or your schedule back to final draft. If, if it used the FDX format, you have to use the FDX format or uh, uh, bring it into movie magic scheduling as the .sex file. Okay. So you could do that too. Those are brand new features in Gorilla. <laughs> Oh, high show budget sections. Okay, so let's go back to the budget. So this is a new feature that we added. So if you click on print and more options, and let's say you want to print a top sheet, for example, down here, this is brand new where it says select sections to print. By default, it's going to print all sections, you know, right? But let's say you only want to print the pre-production and production and post. So I don't want to click print other. I click deselect. Notice it grays it out. It will also gray it out on the top sheet, right? And now if I print the budget, it's only going to show those three sections, and it's going to total only those three sections. Similarly, I can go right onto the top sheet, and I can, let me go back down over here, and I can click on this button here and say show section, and that will now show it. And now if you show it, it will print it. Okay. You can do that with any one of the sections. So any kind of any section, these are, these are considered sections. So pre-production, production, post-production, post those are considered sections. So you can hide or show by default, they're all showing those sections. Okay. Customize grand totals. Okay. Let me go back to the top sheet and show you, do we do a top sheet report? And the second page are the totals here. So all these things right here, contractual charges, fringes, section add-ons, grand total, these labels can be changed, okay? So, and again, you might ask, why is that possible? Why is that even a thing? Because someone asked. So I, I don't remember where it was, but <clears throat> I think it was someone from a foreign country said, I want to change it because nobody knows in that foreign country what contractual charges means because it's percentages here. So we added that. So if you go to budget preferences and you go to grand total labels, you can go in here and these are the default, right? So if I wanted to change contractual charges to something different or another language, you could even do that, okay? So that's something you can do. All right. Oh, Q&A in 304, only four minutes late. Nice, okay. So those are the tips and tricks that I wanted to show you. There's a lot more, of course. I just wanted to get some of the ones that I thought were interesting that most people don't use. 
Um, uh, I'm now going to open this up to any kind of any question that you that you have. It doesn't have to be about um, you know one of the things that I spoke about. It could be something that you don't know about, or you want to ask a question about guerrilla or scheduling or budgeting in general. Uh, I know you have to enter in estimated times manually. Any plans on it being able to estimate by page count? Uh, well, you have that we did add. Okay, so the, the, let's see, let me go into here. We did add the scene timing. So you can very quickly go granular into a scene. So yes, this up here was what you might be talking about. You have to enter manually. Um, oh, must be able to do a 12 o'clock. All right, you're welcome, Mark. Thanks. But here, you can literally go through and line by line say, I want to prep the lighting, I want to block the scene, and put in an hour or 30 minutes. And this, this time will override whatever time is up here. Um, so you can do this. You can do the scene timing, which is brand new. But the problem with the trying to um, uh, being able to, um, yeah, this is really cool. And you could do a report, a scene timing report, which is brand new. Um, uh, the, the problem with estimating the time based on page count, I mean, it's so random is the problem. I, you know, a lot of people, sometimes a, a half a page can take three days to shoot. You know, it's, it's, it would be, it would behoove us, I think, to try to do something like that, you know, because uh, there's no real formula. I know some people say a page a minute and this kind of a thing, but anyway, that's a good question though. Is there a way to have times added to banners? Okay. So that's something that we were probably going to add in the future. Um, yeah. So that you can add banner times the banners so you can double click on it. And then there'll be a little, you know, 30 minutes or one hour, and it will add and calculate into the end of day one calculation estimated time for the day. Yes, something we we actually, it's it's in our queue. Um, I can't say exactly when, but we do have it as part of our queue to, to do that. Yes. Um, Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good feature to be able to add time to banners because sometimes you know company move could be two hours or <clears throat> or what have you. So yeah, hmm, I could show you the link location to set. Most people don't use this down here because uh, I talked so much about locations. What this option this though we've had this for a while, but I don't think most people use it. Um, what this allows you to do is link a location to a set example so link the location remember i already created these locations right so amanda's apartment to all instances of interior amanda's bedroom okay um and i could say i guess day so what this if i click on the link button right now it will go through all the scenes and every single interior Amanda's bedroom day will be linked. In other words, right here, instead of you doing it manually, you know, scene by scene, you'll see Amanda's apartment right here. So very helpful if you, if you have your locations. So for example, again, um, I think Sam's diner on main street, I had a halt for Hollywood. Uh, I could do that. Hollywood. Um, yeah. Uh, inter, but again, interior Hollywood, it'd only be interior Hollywood day. You might have to do it again for night, or maybe just leave that one blank. I'm not sure. But <clears throat> anyway, that's a cool way to, 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 if you have 30 or 40 scenes at a single location, a lot easier to do it this way than to do one at a time. You know, so that's a cool, that's a cool feature. Most people, again, don't use that. Again, because they don't go down here to the pull downs. A lot of really cool things in the pull downs. You know, copy all elements from another breakdown sheet. Good one. So if I do this, I can literally say, uh, you know what? I want all these elements that I already have on a breakdown sheet to copy to, and then I can literally go through and say scene one, scene two, scene three, or what have you. And, um, you know, it'll copy everything from one, one breakdown sheet to another. So that's kind of cool too. 
Um, okay. All right. Excellent. So, um, yeah, if there's no more questions, I'll wrap it up. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, just email me or email us or chat chat them in. And uh, hope hope to, hope you guys enjoyed it. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody.